Hi, this is Oliver, and here's my project PyOCR. PyOCR is an optical character recognition program that can recognize and execute code that is printed on paper. And this is useful because when we do a code tracing problem on paper, we can't double check our work unless we manually type in the problem into the computer and then execute it. Now with this program, there's an easier way. Here, I click File Browser. I pick this image. It's actually taken from a Quiz 4X. It's a code tracing problem. If I run it through the system, It'll take a while because it's a pretty big image. Uh, as you can see, the, it has caught every single indent. It only made several small mistakes, like this is supposed to be an L, this is supposed to be a zero, uh, this is supposed to be a quotation mark. Uh, looks good. So if I click execute code, there, there's the output. So then you can easily double check your mistakes and this took much shorter time than if you would have keyboarded it into the computer. Now, this is a perfect image, it's a screenshot of a PDF document. So a real image would be much more distorted, such as this one. It's rotated, it's slightly skewed in perspective, but luckily my code can handle this. Um, I'll turn on demo mode real quickly, so it can show all the single, every single step, and I'll explain it step by step. So if we run this through, the first step is edging. It would detect the edges on the document, such as this one, and uh, it will find a contour. So here the green line marks the contour that I found, and it has to be four points. So if it's four points, it can manipulate it to turn into a perfect and a straight image. Here you go. It's now all the lines are straight, and uh, you can see in the background there's a lot of noise. But luckily, the next step is denoising. Now the background is completely uniform, and um, black text looks uniform as well. So then it will do a fresh holding. What it, this does is it turns every pixel into either completely black or completely white, depending on how how bright it is in, in its neighborhood. So then, after this, uh, there's an erosion morphology, which is, uh, it will just turn the black lines into thicker black lines, and this helps join up uh, characters that may have been broken after the thresholding step. So then, after this, we, we have a text block indication. So basically what it does is it turns the text into blocks, and it helps show the indents. Here you can see there's a clear indent over there, and each line of text is separated by a distinct white line, so then the code is able to run through it and detect the tab on each line. Uh, it, this result is terrible, and the reason is because the OCR engine can't handle rotated images. Luckily, we have a rotate image button, and we can just click it to rotate it into the proper orientation. So, here you go. Now, this has a pretty good accuracy, but it's much worse than before, and that's because it's not a perfect image. But this is pretty good for an image that's, that was completely distorted and rotated at first. And uh, my code also offers a handwriting mode. It's it's pretty bad because uh, I did not have a really large training set, and it's only recognizing my own handwriting. But if you turn on the handwriting mode, it can actually do okay with an image like this one. As you can see, it's not uniform, it's not straight. The characters are very squiggly, and I have a bad handwriting. Bad handwriting. And if I run this through, um, let's see. Uh, it's, it did okay, I mean. It's not, it's not great, but with more training data, it can do better. So that could be a future improvement. And also, my code also offers a way to input an image through the webcam. And here's the button for that. If I click this, let's see. Uh, if I can get this into the screen properly. Let's see if we can detect the edges. It's a little bit squiggly, which means it might not be able to detect it. It did. So, as you see, it did pretty good. It could detect some tabs and stuff. And, um, I mean, some of the indentation is off, but overall, it did pretty good from an image that's taken directly from a low quality camera. So, as you can see, this project is probably better to be on a mobile platform. And because then you can take a photo easily with your phone. So that might be another future step. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching this video.